How to knit round neck hole. A few of subscribers who watched the video about how to shape a perfect armhole also asked uh, to show how I do the neckline. So in the next video, I will explain you how to calculate a round neckline. It's pretty simple and I will show you how I do it on the, on the swatch I just made and you will get the general idea and you will be able to knit a round neckline on any garment. Welcome to the tutorial about how to knit the round neck hold using short rows. This uh, video will be in two parts, theory and the practical part. And uh, I will show you how to make a round neckline, like in this picture. And I will use the lace pattern. When we talk about round neck hole, we normally think uh, of a circle, right? But it's not 100%. You can knit absolutely round um, neck hole, but it's not necessary. Usually it will look more like oval, but if you put into the square or rectangle, you can see that uh, even the circle, when you put around some straight line, you can distinct some straight lines. So basically, um, this is uh, the secret behind the round neckline, because we forget that we need to knit the straight part here when we make all our decreases here we should need some straight rows it's very obvious when you need uh, front and back separate but it's not that obvious for example in raglan sweater so we start with easy formula about how big the neck hole should be um, head plus neck circumference divided by two so these are my numbers, 56 centimeters plus 34, it is 90, and divided by 2. So this is minimum, the opening, how big the opening should be. So basically, it should be at least uh, the head, how the head sits on you. So you just get over the head, unless you have uh, some opening, like buttons or zipper. Then, of course, it can be even smaller because it will come closer to the neck and you will not have to get over the head. But if you want to get over the head, you really look after so it gets over it. Or another thing is just take your favorite sweater and measure ready sweater's uh, neck hole. And there you go. So here I just show you Mm, how actually the round neckline it is, you see? Um, basically, it is mm, like oval shape, more like oval, longer. You can um, draw the straight lines and you see this is the height of the back face. This is the depth of the uh, front neckline. And uh, when we are knitting, when we talk about round neckline, we basically are trying to achieve as round look as possible. No matter what you do, the secret behind the round neck hole is this here, <clears throat> the straight part after the shaping the initial neck hole. You can make deeper or more uh, or smaller, but you have to have the straight part. What happens uh, when you don't do the straight part? You also get a nice neck hole, but in different shape. It will look something like this. Is it acceptable? Yes. You have designs like that, like in this sweater here. But you see, what I want to do, I want to make round neck hole. And this is the swatch I, swatch I used in my practical part. And here you can see how here the straight part creates this nice neck line shaping. And if you are still here, so don't forget to like the video and subscribe. It really help. It will help you not to miss further helpful videos. 
and also turn on the notification bell and we continue so <laughs> these are the calculations um don't get afraid so basically what we start we decided how many stitches wide we want the ne neck hole to be and the size yeah how how many rows so in my case i know the depth of the um our neck hole will be 24 rows and for the back i will have eight rows so i have my gauge uh 2.2 stitches and four rows per one centimeter so i decided i will have 41 stitches now listen carefully to this all the stitches which are designed uh, for neckline uh, you divide by three and here in front you leave at least the third not less but third of the stitches in my case if i would divide by three it would be 13.66 stitches let's say 14 stitches fine you can put 14 here but i have 17 because i'm knitting a lace pattern and i have to take into consideration the repeats as well so i moved on to the bigger side okay we leave the third stitches in the middle then the rest of the stitches we split in half between the two sides okay we have 24 stitches divided by 2 12. so on each side there should be 12 stitches okay i will show you from one side now we have 12 stitches here now we divide those 12 stitches in three parts again it will be easy because 12 by uh, divided by three is four so we'll leave four here here and here and there will be this straight part now the part which is closer to the middle we have to divide in the groups of three two and one yeah this will be decreases decrease for example three stitches and two stitches and one just to have the smooth decrease line the more stitches the straighter the line the less stitches are left you no know, like for example if we decrease uh one 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 it will be steeper you know and when we need straight it will be vertical line in my case uh, I divided it like this way here four mm, only one three gets into four but um, I want to have two times three so I can take two from this four and imagine I'll have six and divided by two it's three three so here are two groups of three the next four is only two left i leave as it is two and then the four i divide into groups of one so four ones and when i will knit short rows and decrease three one two three four five six seven times i will need 14 rows together you know we, we decrease every second row so 24 but i need 24 rows so i need eight more rows and these the rows which are left i distribute them um on this part so eight rows and with the back i am acting similarly but at the back i leave around half stitches from all the stitches from the for the neck hole so in my case i decided it will be 23 stitches since i have eight rows i also divide the rest of the stitches between the sides so i have nine on each side i divide divide them in groups of in three groups three 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 again if i would have for example um 10 
then I would split them in like four, three, three, but four, I would leave here on closer to the middle, okay? So now I need to split those numbers into threes, uh, twos, and ones. This is how I did in this case. And now when I will be knitting, I will have one, two, three, four times two eight rows. I will have eight rows. Here's five. So just bear in mind, um, here you will have to leave, normally you would want to leave here number one just to have the smoother um, line when you join together the front neck line with the back. For, for the back, you, not, you don't have to necessarily need the straight part. You can, but you don't have to. So you can play around with these numbers, with these numbers, just to get the calculation correct. Here, I made it more graphically, take uh, according to my calculations, I played a little bit in Stitch Fiddle um, software. Uh, it's online, it's uh, for free. For example, here, the red line is for the front, the purple is for the back, and you can actually see how the differing distribution of the stitches shape the neckline. That's why right. this part we divide in threes, here are twos, and this part into ones, because this is exactly what will create the shape. You can play around and see how you like it, but this little trick, which I wanted to show you how to play around and you will be understanding better how it will how you have to how will you have to knit and here i draw this short row um, how to knit the short rows uh, we knit short rows once on the one side and then we move on to the other side here on the knit row uh, we can put the marker here and here, and we know that's the middle. We knit until the marker, then we turn, knit back, knit uh, again, but we leave the three stitches unworked and we turn. And again, leave three stitches, turn, leave two stitches, and then by one, by one, by one, by one, how many, four times, and then we don't do short rows, we just continue knitting straight. And then we need to get on the other side. We pick up the stitch, stitches on the straight side. We work all the short row stitches. We knit uh, through the middle part. We go uh, onto the other side. And on this side, we do exactly like on the right side, but we start from the wrong side because it's like a mirror, okay? We start on the wrong side and do exactly like this. And then once we finished the other side, we again go back, we pick up stitches here, we work all the short rows and we come back and our neck hole is ready. So here is a little bit uh, sum up of everything what I said before. And now we are ready to move to the practical part. So before you start uh, knitting the neckline, you can thread through the lifeline just in case if something doesn't work, you can unravel and the stitches will not get lost. So the middle part, the straight part, I put the markers in each side. So five stitches I leave, 
imaginary the shoulder just to show you and then we will need to um, two times by three stitches one times two and four stitches one stitches four times you know so let's start first I need all the stitches until the marker and then I need to turn Uh, I need accordingly to the pattern at the moment. So I have knit yarn over. Uh, I have right leaning decrease. Stitch. Knit two together. Yarn over. And again, the same. And here, I come to the marker and I simply turn. Use the German short row method, doing a double stitch, and I simply purl back all the stitches. Um, now this is the row number three, and I need to leave three stitches unworked. So this counts as one, two, three. So I knit it in the pattern, and I see there are three stitches left. And I turn, do the German short row double stitch, and I pull back again. So I am at the round number five. So I come to the last three stitches. I finished yarn over, knit stitch. And I leave another three stitches unworked and I turn. Make the German short row double stitch and again I pull back. Now I am on the round number seven. I left three stitches, three stitches, and I will need to turn after two stitches. Leave the two stitches and work so uh, two more stitches i finished the first repeat if i would start next repeat should uh, it would be neat and then two together uh, but in order to not lose the stitch count i will not work this next uh, pattern as in pattern but i will just leave um, i just need the next stitch and i will still not lose the total amount of stitches yeah it still will be 17 and now I can leave the two stitches and again work back I finished here now uh, one repeat in height so I start from over so now I at the row number nine I need the first stitches of the pattern um, knit yarn over two together knit two together yarn over knit stitch and now four times I will leave only um, this double stitch which counts as one stitch not worked and again I will turn back Now is round number 11. Yarn over, two together. Now, 
We should have two together and yarn over. But we can't turn this yarn over, so I just leave these two stitches. I just knit them. Stitch count doesn't change. I can turn. We do two more times uh, short draws, one stitch hand worked, and you see it's already how it turns out already. Next draw again, one, two, three, four. I finished the first part of the, the one repeat. Now I have this, uh, I would have knit stitch, yarn over and two together, but I have the short row and I need to stop here in order not again to keep the stitch count the same I don't do yarn over and I need the next stitch and now I can simply turn the first time okay now we can see our short rows we stopped here left the 17 stitches in the middle then didn't work three the next three, two, and four times one stitch. One, two, three, four. And we have five stitches left, which would be for the um, straight part. So now I work eight rows according, of course, to the pattern. I need um, eight rows just straight as normal flat knitting yeah, and I turn and I just don't do any short rows anymore I just simply turn and knit straight two rows already six more Now my pattern changes. Now I need yarn over and two together. Yeah. And I need up uh, five more rows this way. After I done all this, it looks very strange. But now I will show you what to do next. Now we need to uh, knit all these stitches. We knit also this stitch. And now from this straight part, we need to pick up stitches for the neckline just to make um, from the straight line as we normally we do. So according to my gauge, um, I have um, four rows in height per one centimeter and uh, I need to pick up the stitches here. The rule of thumb is like over four rows, you have to pick up three stitches. I have eight rows, so I would need to pick up like six stitches. No, let's see how much will I get her to make nice shaping. So one. Two, somewhere here, three, and here to close the gap somewhere. You just pick up somewhere when it's uh, less visible, let's call it this way. Uh, 
Oh, I managed to pick up four because usually actually my gauge was four to two so over four, four rows I need to pick up two stitches but it depends you see should not too little should not be too much it's all uh, how should I say according to the pattern and uh, the rows you knitted no let's say I pick up four now I need to work all these short row stitches which is quite easy i just do the uh, knit stitch i treat them and this double stitch is one stitch because later i will need few rows um, in, in stocking it around the neckline and then i will um, bind off the stitches Okay. Again, I knit, knit, knit. There is another double stitch. I knit it off. Another double stitch here, and I knit them off. So basically, one side of the round neckline is ready. It's one half. You see it's already starts shaping out nice now i need to do the same on the other side in order to get to the other side i need to knit all the rows until the end according to the pattern now i knit it all the way till the end and on the other side we will start to um, do short Draw neckline from the wrong side. So we knit until the mark. We we purl until the marker. We're done. We get to our middle part stitches and we turn and we do the German short row um, double stitch on the right side. So this is double stitch and now. We knit back according to the pattern till the end. And again, we do exactly the same like on this side, just from the wrong side here. So we will leave three stitches, then two, four times one. And yeah, and then we knit the straight part. And then I will come back when I have done that. And now when I done when I have done all the short row neckline shaping on the other side i will finish off the imaginary sleeve stitches by that time you also should uh, knit the back shape shaping The back shaping would uh, work similar way, just not as deep, according to this uh, chart I just presented. And from here I need to pick up uh, four stitches the same like we did before. I just will find. We just pick up uh, nicely so you don't have any holes and because I want another side these to be knit stitches so I just pick up as a pearl on this side three well, let's say here will be four okay 
now we have to now we have to work all our short rows here I purl to the other side and I close the other sleeve stitches and at this point you would uh, attach the back neck shaping and this is how the round neckline looks like with the short rows it is okay if you have on one side one more row knitted than the other side because we don't cut off the yarn and do all continuously with short rows um, technically there always will be one extra row but it doesn't affect the end result and overlook so what i did in my neckline i just knitted uh, three four five rows just simple plain stocking it i would uh, knit all around and I finish with the song bind off, uh, which looks the same as long tail and car long tail cast on. I have the separate video. I will leave the link. Um, now I will just show how it looks at the end. I need few um, stock in it rows, and I come back here. How it looks after three stock in it stitch around the neckline, and. That's about it. Now I would cut off my yarn and use the needle bind off and I would have very nice invisible finish of the edge. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please press like and subscribe to my channels and I hope to share more useful videos in the future. Bye!